Hey guys, Mitko here from DN Models and today we're going to peek inside of MiniArts T54-3 freshly out on the market for summer 2017. This is one very interesting subject and that is the reason why the unboxing and the review will deviate slightly from what you're used to see in my videos. Introduction to this particular vehicle might be very long, but I will try to shorten it as much as possible, although this subject, with this particular set that Miniart presented, has more than one story to tell. Now have in mind that I might not be correct in everything that Miniart wanted to say with this kit, but this is how I read things looking at the model. T54-3 is third pre-production vehicle called also T54 model 1951. From the pre-production variants this is the most widely used and longest produced too. T54-3 was very close to T54A and the following modifications although there were still few differences. Here with this kit it gets interesting from the moment you look at the box art. We have a tank with repainted numbers among ruins of what it seems to be an urban site. This is most likely a scene from the bloody and absolutely useless Soviet intervention in Hungary's political course during 1956. Hungary was the first country that stood against forced Soviet presence in Eastern Europe after World War II and it wasn't the last either. During late 1956 there was a revolt or uprising, call it whatever you like, against communist regime that was quickly suffocated by armed invasion of the country. Sources vary in their conclusions but somewhere between 1200 and 4000 tanks were used. Most likely the correct number was between 1300 and 1600 among which this T-54 modification too. Now I'm going to start with the camouflage schemes here since they speak more about the model than anything else, packing, detail and quality. We have a standard glossy A4 in size booklet typical for mini art. On the very front page interior kit logo and some facts such as the engine is included, torsion bars are workable and the total number of detail is exceeding 1000. We have nearly 120 photo edge parts and 7 variants for which I want to speak a bit more than usual, so let's start with them. Opening the instructions we have a nice page with renders of the exterior and interior features of the complete model. Then the first two color options, both are for a certain period 24 to 30th of October 1956. Both are green and one of them is depicted on the box. It is number 815 placed right next to where the original number was before it was repainted. Miniart even gave color with which you should paint the covered area and the number too. Jumping at the end of the instructions we have one more tank from this bloody and unfortunate period of 1956. It is number 324, obviously painted by hand, and overall same looking vehicle. Russian green, but this time without the stowage seen on the other two variants from Hungary that we've seen in the beginning. Too bad that you can connect those vehicles with such a sad story. We have four more variants, one from East Germany or GDR. German Democratic Republic participant in 1961 military exercises, one from Soviet Army from the 60s, Taman Motorized Division with number 329, and one of its siblings 322, but here with overall good looking and untouched and unworn winter camouflage scheme, according to Miniart, used in winter 1962. The last one is 1963 Republic of Iraq. Black number 405 looking like a hand painted with some stowage and some Iraqi letters on front and back. Overall similar looking vehicles however with an abundant story behind them. I don't know about you but by the time I went through the paint schemes for the first time exactly where are here now I got that feeling in my stomach and a touch of sadness 
for all the events connected with the Hungarian Revolt. The rest of the instruction sheet is pretty much what we are used to get from Miniart. This is an interior kit, so there are plenty of parts and sub-assemblies. Like I said, more than 1000 of them. There is a complete engine, complete interior, a lot of ammunitions and workable suspension. Engine compartment doors can be made movable, revealing the engine bay. This is very clever decision from Miniart, allowing you to show the interior without leaving them all unassembled. Tracks are separate links, which will take some time to assemble, but the biggest challenge for the modeler is going to be the turret and its interior. It is crowded with everything you can think of and Miniart went that far that they even put a shell inside of the mechanism of the gun barrel. There are many sub-assemblies as I said here and this definitely is not for beginner modeler. Although there are some modelers that they can cope with that from their very early stages of hobbying, this is terrifying even for me and I am 26 years into the game. So with that said, you can pretty much get the idea what we are dealing with here. This is one very complex model and, in this case, one with great historical value, even though the subject itself is not a mainstream tank per se, but rather a pre-production run of a legendary main battle tank. Once built, this model will be among the most detailed 35th scale available on the market today world class by any standards. So let's get on with the sprues to see what mini art has to tell about the detailing of the plastic. Sprues are packed into one big plastic bag and also are being separated into three smaller bags each holding some area of the tank built. Well, more or less. Miniart are following gradual path of improving their packages, for example, now photo edge parts are packed in special Miniart cardboard envelopes. The sprues too are not being divided into two, but only one half packed. This time each sprue bundle has its own package. Even though once you open the plastic bag everything seems like a mess, it actually isn't. It is truly a big pile of plastic here, but everything has some sort of logic. Now, the first one we are looking at holds ammunition, fenders, engine parts and some others. I won't be going to explain each and every sprue this time, just will show the basic detailing that caught my attention. If you want to get more thorough idea about what is in, you can check my other videos of Mini Art T-Series reviews where I describe the contents of every sprue. In general, this kit is made inside out since it is an interior one. Detailing of everything is great, but you must be aware of the fact that this kit is far from the capabilities of the regular newcomer in the hobby. There is an intimidating part count, with many small and tiny sub-assemblies, lines, numerous hooks and carpet monster delights of all kinds. The machine gun makes very pleasant impression with its detailing, surpassing even the best aftermarket substitutes, even those made from metal. From the interior parts it's very hard to tell the difference between the different variants of those T-Series. One thing that will clear things out are the fuel drums here, which are a bit smaller compared to the later versions. Anyhow, very few molars attach those, so I wouldn't go deep into that. Wherever is needed, welding lines are visible and allow for better weathering and improving the overall look. The interior details are too all around built with clear engineering and perfect in scale look. Some of the sprues are easy to be recognized, but others are not, so I would suggest you to either divide them before assembly or be patient and mark them all. It might look like a lot of work, but it will repay in the end. This is one very complex kit and you gotta trust me on that. Of course, not all of this is absolutely necessary, especially the armament. 
you can easily skip a step or two and miss some parts or leave them aside. But as you saw, the engine, for example, is a masterpiece and a scale model by itself, so that is the one thing that I wouldn't miss to add to this kit. However, there are some other parts that can be easily missed here. With that being said, some parts shouldn't be missed, especially these on the last sprue that I am showing here. There is one wonderful AK gun which is the first that I see in 35th scale and I surely love that. There are others like the main machine gun too and if you have time and patience, overall you will probably add everything in the end of the build. It is definitely worth it. In the second envelope we have the tracks and the wheels. Many things have been said about the tracks. Some people love them, others complain that they are having tough time making them workable. The case is this, tracks can be made workable here. They can be improved too with patience and thin rod if you have the time and the will. Whoever had troubles with those is either using too much glue or the wrong one. Another fact is that those tracks are probably the best tracks not only on T-series tanks but on whatever scale model kit you might think of. They are not metal through that, but they feature detail unseen with any other company. Details such as stamps and with numbers scaled down, which are barely visible before painting and weathering, imagine what will be after. So no complaints about those despite the negative comments from some. Wheels are the spider web type, typical for earlier tank models and an item that make T54-3 distinguishable from the later T-series more easily. Other details can be seen here, all of them with good quality and little flash visible only on some parts. There are additional engine parts which can be used with this or other kits too, like a repair shop diorama or something similar. The detail of everything included here is consistent without blank spots if I may call that parts lacking detail or attention from the company. No such thing with mini art. The focus of this particular envelopes are the tracks and the wheels though, so despite the other parts featured, these are the most interesting and deserving attention. The last envelope features mostly larger spruce details from the upper part of the tank and so on. They do come in separate envelope and this is the first time that I see many are doing that. As I've said, they follow a gradual and consistent path of improving their packings. These are more easily recognizable, but still, I advise you to mark each and every sprue with numbers, letters and even colors for easy recognition. Within this package, there are sprockets, some suspension details and such. They are very nicely detailed and it is too bad that this detail will be wasted beneath the dirt. The fenders look very good as well as the mantlet and the texture of everything that needs attention is absolutely fantastic. If you pay attention to the engineering you can see that the things are following the idea of a tank that might be left with many open hatches or make them movable. One such thing is mandatory for a vehicle with interior if you don't want to cut through to show the insides. The other is that this allows for better damage replication, thus better realism. That combined with the numerous parts included will give you one very advanced scale model second to none in the business. The single piece gun barrel is something that I would like to exchange though. And this is the only thing that I would change actually. The gun is with simple shape but it will be better in my opinion if an aftermarket part is used. It isn't necessary and for those that are more patient, sanding and cleaning the surface won't be a problem. But with that amount of parts included, I believe that my patience will run out rather soon and I would go for the metal barrel here. Maybe there are variations of the guns featured in that tank too, so if you can get your hands on more information, probably you will be able to play with the subject a bit more. The bottom features great welding lines, which unfortunately will be hidden behind the weathering. 
but all together with everything makes the look of the tank consistent and properly made. There is a lot that will be hidden if you go the whole distance and build it all. The turret is the thing that shows the biggest difference from the other two pre-production runs of the T-Series. It has no curves at its base and it looks like the turrets of the later versions. This combined with the spider wheels will give a very specific distinctive look of this tank. And if you note the size and then go back in the video to see the instructions that I showed, you will get an idea about the nightmare of tiny parts that is ahead of you in case you decide to go for the full interior. On the outside the turret is textured nicely but the trouble starts here when you go in. For some this is fun though. Interior is what this kit is about. Clear parts, decals and photo edge is what comes next. First the decals. We have a small sheet which looks like Begemot produced it. This is most likely the case. As expected we have limited number of markings on it since we all know that Soviet tanks are more often than not the looking green dark vehicles colored in 4BO. Since we already looked through the marking options in the beginning, you already know what is needed for those 7 versions. Some of those decals can be substituted with hand painting, others not. Whatever the case is and if you decide to pick any of those 7 versions here, this is what you have to deal with. Some people complain that these decals cause some troubles, but my experience tells me otherwise. Begemot, if they are the producer here, make good enough products and I believe that with proper preparations any surface can handle those. Next are the clear parts. Although very good with clear parts, mini art are to be praised for those for vehicles that feature visible ones, not tank periscopes. Not that these are bad, just the contrary. But like I always say, clear parts and tanks do not go well together, even in reality. With that said, for fans of clear tanks, Plastic parts from transparent material here are more than satisfactory and there is nothing to complain about. Lastly, we have two photo edge sheets. They are similar to the ones that we've seen with the other T-Series from Miniart and they are superb. Edward are the best when it comes down to pre-painted photo edge parts, but Miniart produced the thinnest ones and the most delicate too. I still remember my first encounter with those when I accidentally sanded part of my mesh of one of the small tanks from Miniart that I was building. They are that fragile. Which speaks about precision and thickness too. What else are photo edge parts for if not replicating the tiniest and most delicate elements in scale and possible for reproduction in plastic? No doubt about it, the quality here is superb and second to none. Now, to wrap all up, I gotta say that this kit is a clear winner. The item number is 37007 and we have 7 versions included. Lucky number 7 all the way. As you know, precision and delicacy are amongst the most important advantages that Miniart has to offer against the fierce competition in the scale modeling world nowadays and they do deliver with each and every T-Series tank that they produce. On the other hand, as I've said, the kit made me a bit sad. I spent all day thinking while making this video what was the horror that Hungarian people went through back in 1956. I was too born in a communist country and spent my first 8 years in that idiotic society with its absurd propaganda. So it was somewhat personal and I felt really depressed for all the people who died during these days that this model kits reminds of. Nearly 3000 of them, civilian mostly. Sadly, this piece of machinery was there to witness it all. So in conclusion, this is one very highly recommended scale model kit. Not only because the kit is good and detailed all over, 
nor that it is very decently priced for what it has to offer out of the box. But because as a piece of diorama or a vignette, or even as a standalone kit, this can be turned into a small memorial. Something that will honor and remind us for the absurdities that happened not so long ago and that we should never let such things happen again. Mini art made a great example for something rare and unpopular. Their masters in that area, no doubt about it. They made also a perfect team that many can reproduce and present in their own way and through their own eyes. Thank you for that, Mini art. So, thank you for watching. For me, it was a challenge and a pleasure to produce this video. The subject touched me deeply. I hope that you liked the review and stay tuned for more. Subscribe, hit the like button and comment down below. Don't forget to visit MiniArt Renewed website, it is already up and running and it looks beautiful. Thanks once again and I will see you in the next one.